Hello, and welcome back to the Imminent Collection Anime DVD and Blu-ray Collection video showcase thing. Doesn't really roll off the tongue, I appreciate. So, this is part two. In part one, we went from A to D, which doesn't seem like a lot, but it's weird, actually. I'd say A to D does cover about a third of my collection. So today, we are starting from E onwards. Obviously, if you haven't seen part one, go back and watch it. No, don't. It's up to you. Start midway because you're in control. I'm talking about being in control, or not being in control. <coughs> the first DVD is Eden of the East, complete season one. Now I want to say there's like two seasons in a movie. This was an interesting one. I bought this um, as a blind purchase many, many years ago. And it's very interesting. It is a slightly weird series. It's all about a bunch of people who are given phones and essentially unlimited money and it's up to them to win something or realise their dream or something like that. It's sort of a little bit Battle Royale-esque as well, I think they go against each other. It's been a while since I watched it. It's a little bit confusing. I remember watching the series and liking it but not loving it because it is a little bit weird at par uh, in parts but... Uh, Definitely worth the watch though, I do need to get the rest, there's probably a collection with all of them in actually. But yeah, not bad, I um, yeah, I, I think I may rewatch this soon. Next up is a series that I hope I don't get demonetised for, because she's not wearing much, and that's Elven Lead, or Elven Lied. Now those of you with, um, actually no, that's in English, okay. Those of you with keen eyes will notice this is actually German on the back. So this is one of my first DVD purchases, and this was on a recommendation of a friend of the channel, Wizzerland, uh, who recommended I get it. It is, if you've seen it, quite a gory series. Ah, there it is, 18. I was going to say, it doesn't really have... Well, actually, that, that would have probably given it away. It is about a very cute girl who has invisible arms and was a lab experiment and kind of goes on a killing spree, but then kind of moves in with a guy who looks after her. This is, it is a rough series. It is dark, there is a lot going on. Uh, this was actually one of my first series along with Chobbits that I like watched in full, that wasn't a shonen. And man, it is, it's a heavy one. Um, I don't know if it has critical acclaim or not. I don't know if a lot of people liked it, but this is a very cool set. I imagine it's out of print now, but you could probably still find this, maybe it's on Blu-ray or something. If you do like your anime a little bit gory and very dark, I recommend giving it a go. It's um, it's another one I haven't seen for like over a decade. Maybe I, I need to re-watch this. This is ADV. I think I've gone out of business now, so this specific DVD is long out of print, I imagine. Next up is Escaflone. Or Escaflone. Or as the series is actually called, Vision of Escaflone. But... As you can see here, there's no vision of part of this. It is just Escaflone, which is confusing because that is the name of the movie that released in 2000 that kind of summarised the whole series. This is the anime series itself and not the movie. As you can see here, it comes on multiple discs. So I just recently finished watching this, actually. Um, this I watched about two weeks ago. And wow, I am really impressed. This is essentially an isekai, but not really. So this came out in the 90s. It is very 90s. And it's all about Hitomi, who ends up going to Gaia, which is a sort of a hidden planet that um, circulates the Earth. That is filled with sort of fantasy creatures. There's beast people, there's draconians, there's uh, the handsome men who are good with swords, all, all of that. So this is quite a historical, uh, historically significant anime series. I think it did inspire quite a few people. It's also got mechs in it, which I didn't expect. So this is all the anime as well. I think this is a fairly recent release. I got this second hand in a shop for five pounds, which is incredibly good. I really like this series. Um, I went in expecting pretty good and came out being very, very impressed. Escaflown or Vision of Escaflown is Definitely recommended. If you've never heard of it before, or only ever heard of it but never watched it, 
definitely recommend you go watch this. If you like kind of fantasy kind of stuff, uh, it is, it's really good. Next up is a series I don't know if I really need to introduce, and that is Evangelion 1.11, You Are Not Alone. So these, this is part of what is called the Rebuild of Evangelion movie series, just in case you've never heard of it. And this at least started as a sort of OVA film of the series. So this covers the first, like, uh, ten or so episodes, maybe, of Ev Neon Genesis Evangelion. Um, and then it was followed by the sequel, Evangelion 2.22, You Can Not Advance. Um, so, the significance of the numbers as well, when this released in cinemas, it was Evangelion 1, and then that, that title, and then this was released as Evangelion 2, with that title. But when they released on home video and stuff, they did become 1.11, 2.22, because I think there is slight extras added to it. Uh, these are in my own opinion, amazing. I really enjoy, oh, enjoy these. We've also got uh, fold-outs for a bunch of other things. Some of these you might be seeing later on, um, and some you've already seen in part one, unless you haven't seen part one. So this, no, this actually has a insert featuring Mary, who at this point, 2.22, is where the movie started diverging. So re this is when Rebuild became its own continuity and not just a movie adaptation of the series as Mary was added, who was not originally a character in the series. And then by the point of Evangelion 3.33, you cannot redo, um, it had taken its own stand. So this is the collector's edition Blu-ray now, I was kind of lucky in that I managed to get this for a very cheap price because it didn't have a price on it when I went to HMV and they rung me up with the DVD, the regular standard DVD price. But this is the collector's edition because it does come with a very nice art book as well. I was sort of like behind the scenes concept art and stuff, which I'm showing you upside down because I'm a fucking idiot, but it's very nice. Um, you know, I'm glad I have the collector's edition of this. Now, sadly, I don't have 3.0 plus 1.0, which is the fourth movie, confusingly. Um, I will eventually get that on Blu-ray, though, along with maybe upgrading these two to Blu-rays. I think they are a little bit expensive now, unfortunately. I think the DVDs are as well, so I'll keep an eye out. But for now, the DVDs are serviceable. Now, I don't actually have... Evangelion itself, the series, on Blu-ray, sadly. I will maybe eventually get it, but there's like four different versions, and the version I'd quite like is the one with the ADV dub, which is the old dub, but that, I think, is quite a pricey Blu-ray, but I'm keeping my eye out for that. But for now, these, I think, are very good as well. I know they're a bit divisive, a lot of purists dislike these and think Neon Genesis is the best and only version. Personally, I really like the rebuilds, though. I know for a movie you may not have heard of, and that is Fireworks. So this came in yet another of the sort of anime mystery boxes or whatever. And I watched this uh, last year sometime, and honestly, very impressed. The premise is it all takes place on a uh, sort of Matsuri evening uh, in Japan, where they have festivals of fireworks and stuff. But there's also kind of got an alternate dimension, time travel kind of aspect to it. I don't want to say too much, because they might give it away. It is a movie, it's about an hour and a half, maybe two hours. It is visually very nice. Again, in all the anime release. Yeah, I definitely recommend giving it a go. If you like a little bit, it's sort of sci-fi, but sort of not too much, a bit romantic as well. Uh, yeah, it's it's a really good film. I was thoroughly surprised, never heard of it before, but definitely recommend giving it a watch. Next up is a series that's a bit older, uh, but I think still has quite a dedicated fan base. That is Full Metal Panic. So this is a kind of combination high school slice of life slash mech anime. Uh, it is, it's a, it's a weird combo, but honestly it kind of works as well. 
Uh, it's all about, I can't remember his name, but he is placed into school to look after a girl with special powers, but also he is an operative, obviously as you, can, as you can tell, who pilots a mech. I got this for a particularly cheap price uh, years ago for like £5, along with Full Metal Panic Fumofu, which kind of diverged a little bit. So this came out not long after Full Metal Panic. This focuses on the slice of life and comedy a lot more. Each episode is essentially 10 minutes, so each episode is two episodes really. Sometimes they flow into each other. But it follows the kind of slice of life slapstick sort of, um, you know, attributes that the first season had. Um, some people, I think, disliked this because it was a lot less serious. Honestly, I really enjoyed this though, so I rewatched the whole series uh, last year. And I remember kind of liking Fumofu of the episodes I'd watched, but having watched all of it, I really dig this. I think this is very enjoyable. It kind of stands alone as well. You, I mean, you definitely need to have seen season one, but I, I, I think I don't know. I think it works as a sort of late, mid to late two thousand slice of life high school comedy and stuff of its own. But of course, for those of you who prefer, you know, maybe the more serious approach, there's also the second raid. So it was kind of interesting. Is I think. This had quite a budget, but took a while to make. So whilst they were working on this, I think another team worked on Fumofu. So what started as a hybrid kind of split off into two series that focus on their own strength, being Slice of Life, and this is more action-based, plot-heavy kind of stuff, which I really enjoyed as well. I think being able to focus on, you know, the one aspect and stuff does make it a little bit more enjoyable to watch. The first series, I did feel, slightly suffered from whiplash sometimes, in that you'd have a very serious plotline, followed by two or three slice-of-life episodes where they have the school festival or baseball or something. And it kind of did feel like, oh, um, okay, cool, you know, and then it would, like, ramp up again. Whereas these two, I think, do the job slightly better because this is all serious mostly anyway and this is all you know light-hearted and stuff but yeah being as i got all three of these blu-rays pretty cheap they are all all the anime as well they are still in circulation i don't think they've ever been as cheap as i got them they were five pounds each when i bought them definitely worth it i think they're up to like 20 pounds each now i don't know you know i mean if you like the series i'd say they're worth it anyway but for the deal I got, these are definitely, uh, you know, a nice addition to my collection. Warning! Warning! This is a knockoff item. I think, anyway. So I've looked online, I can't really find much on this. But this is Full Metal Alchemist Part 1. Or what's it called? Complete Box Set Part 1. So, I bought this about 15 years ago on eBay. This is back in the day when pirate copies of anime was a lot more prevalent. I will say, however, honestly, this collection is kind of beautiful. It's got a lot of inlays and stuff going on. So I'll show you all. The discs obviously have artwork on them, which is kind of a bit rare for, you know, pirate copies or like illegal, legit illegitimate versions. But I don't know. This set is really nice, and it's got menus and everything, so while this is unofficial, I am keeping hold of this. So this is Full Metal Alchemist 2003, this isn't Brotherhood obviously, and is almost certainly a knockoff, because I can't find anything about it online. But this does have English language and stuff, despite the fact the spine is in Japanese. So this is part one. And this is part two, so um, the case is different, which already kind of suggests that this is, you know, the, the, the care of an official thing isn't quite there. The spine is there, the back, uh, actually no, the, there is in English as well, which is pretty cool, you don't always see that. The artwork, again, is absolutely beautiful in these. The discs are like hollow and everything, as in holographic. And this artwork, it's... It's just really nice, honestly, overall. Which is why 
even though I now have O3 on Blu-ray, which I haven't watched yet, so it isn't part of the collection, I am still going to keep these because they're so interesting as well. They don't look, they don't look half arsed They look like there's been a lot of, you know, effort put into them. If anyone does happen to know anything about these sort of unofficial versions, please let me know in the comments, because, uh, I mean, I know they're unofficial, and especially these days, you can get anime for so cheap on DVD or Blu-ray, but, I don't know, there's a charm about them, they're from a different era and stuff, and they are kind of a, a pride of place in my collection. I am genuinely happy I have these, and I'd, I'd never leave them go. They're just, they're so cool. I do as well have the Full Metal Alchemist 2003 movie, Conqueror of Shambhala. This is the famous one that has Hitler in it. It's kind of alternative universe. Um, I don't think it's canonical. But I kind of enjoyed this movie. I didn't love it and I didn't hate it. It was it was fine. I need to re-watch it, actually. I think I've only ever watched it once. I also have the Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood OVA collection. So I did have Brotherhood on DVD, but I actually gave them to friend of the channel, Dan, because I recently bought Brotherhood on Blu-ray, but I haven't got around to watching it yet, so it's not in the collection. But these are OVAs, which, having read the manga recently, I realise a lot of the OVAs are actually based on chapters of the manga, so it's not really made up or newly created stuff. This is actually, you know, canonical, it's just they didn't introduce it in Brotherhood, but instead made some OVAs. I think there are four or five in here. They're pretty good. I just bought it so I'd have a full collection. I think I am missing a few movies and stuff like that, but I'll eventually pick those up as well. Next up is the Ghost in the Shell movie double pack. So this contains Ghost in the Shell 2.0 and Ghost in the Shell 2 Innocence. So, confusingly, Ghost in the Shell 2.0 is the first Ghost in the Shell movie just basically with CG. So they remade parts of the movie but using CG renders instead. Now I want to say disc 2 I think has the original without CG renders. In fact yes I was correct. So disc 1 has 2.0, disc 2 has the original movie version. I don't know how well received 2.0 is I watched both of them. I slightly prefer the original just because the 3D rendering's a little bit jarring. But I mean, either either version is pretty good. And of course, there's the second Ghost in the Shell movie, which is Innocence. This one specifically, I remember being a little bit of a mindfuck. Uh, this goes very trippy later on in the movie. I really enjoyed it. Again, I don't think this was as popular as the first movie. But I think if you're a fan of the first movie, it's definitely worth checking this out because there are very, very weird sort of like existential moments in it. And I don't fully understand the movie myself. I need to like, I need to rewatch these again. It's been years since I've seen uh, either of these. And next up is Ghost in the Shell Standalone Complex. So this is the TV series. It is 26 episodes. I do believe this also came with a bit of a guide and kind of like companion piece thing and because it's kind of an older release also came in seven discs so I'll show you the cover I think inside is pretty actually inside has artwork as well so uh, this might take a while but we've got disc two as well I won't take too long on each one but um, this is a fantastic series it's more episodic. There is a running theme, but generally speaking, you know, most episodes are sort of standalone, get it? And they kind of just explore the world of Ghost in the Shell and sort of... If you're a fan of sci-fi and cyberpunk, I highly recommend this. There's definitely a lot going on. I mean, the Tachikoma alone, there's like a side story involving them, which is pretty wild. Um, it does get, kind of like the movies, it does get very existential at times and stuff. It is very deep. I, um, if you enjoy the movies, I highly recommend you watch this. It's also made by Production IG, who are well known for their visually impressive series and stuff, and this was very impressive throughout. It's, um, I don't know if it's official canon with the movies, but it is its own canon, which, you know, is very, very enjoyable. And, of course, there was 
Standalone Complex, the second gig, which is obviously the second series. Much like the first, uh, it does come on seven discs with a companion thing, so we'll take a quick look at that. Companion's a lot thinner in this one. I mean, still got some very nice artwork, of course. Uh, so, let's take a quick look at the art and stuff. I'm sure there are like scans online if you want a you know, deep look at these, but it's, uh, again, season two, I thought was really good. It expands on some things. Uh, it follows on from the first season, so sort of plots get deeper and stuff, and uh, things get a little more complex and convoluted and stuff. The, uh, the artwork on some of these is... Uh... I mean, hey, look. The major is, you know, prime waifu material. If indeed she is a woman, nobody knows. She is a... You know, she inhabits a mechanical body, but nobody knows who she really is. I think second season does delve into that a little bit, but I mean, the whole point of the series is it's a mystery. Um, and, you know, it's got some really cool um, characters as well. Bato, for example, he's one of my favourite characters in... <coughs> In all of anime, I'd potentially say. He's very relatable, but he's also, like, very cool, very reliable. Uh, and, yeah, second season, kind of like with the movie, it does get quite trippy in parts, but is well worth a watch if you love the Ghost in the Shell universe. And I also have Solid State Society, which is a OVA kind of movie follow-up to the second series. I think, I don't remember being super impressed with this, but I didn't hate it either. I think since this release, there have been a few other series and movies and stuff, but I've just not kept up with them. I will eventually, maybe one day, but I think one or two of the movies are kind of OVA retellings of the series, so I don't know if I need to watch those for the other stuff. I'll, I'll look it up one day, maybe, if I'm really in a Ghost in the Shell mood and I want to add to my collection. But yeah, this wasn't bad. And next up is The Girl Who Leapt Through Time, which is a fantastic movie. So this is one of the first anime movies I ever watched that wasn't based on a series or anything. And honestly, really impressed. If, um, if you've never watched it, I highly recommend giving it a watch. It's part sort of sci-fi, part sort of fantasy and stuff. Um, I won't give anything away, but it is definitely worth a watch. I need to get this on Blu-ray, actually. And next up is a bit of an older one, and that is Gundam Double Zero. I've always called it Double Zero, but is it Double O? I'm not sure. So, <coughs> this is by a company called Bees, who I think no longer exist. So this is the special edition kind of box set. And if we open it up, it comes with three parts. So this... The, this is very rarely something I buy, but this came in the like part one, two, and three stuff. So this is part one with two discs. Then there is part two, uh, which you guessed it, comes with two discs. And of course, part three. Can you guess how many discs there are? Well, if you guessed four, I don't know what is wrong with you, because uh, it's just two as well. But yeah, these I bought uh, all at one go, basically. This is my first Gundam series. So these are the back of the three um, collector's edition parts as well. So this came with a few things, as you can see here. Let me unfold it. Which I don't actually have in the box, but it came with a figure, sort of, that you build yourself. It has a patch, which I actually have on a jacket of mine. A key ring I've put somewhere, and a badge I've put somewhere. The other two didn't actually come with anything, they just came in the box. But still, they are pretty cool. I do love having them. I have since bought Double Zero on Blu-ray along with Season 2. This is just Season 1, Episode 1 to 26. But I do kind of like it. It's a nice looking collector's edition kind of thing. And next up is another Bees Special Edition. That is Gurren Lagann. Now, I know the series is Tegan Toppen Gurren Lagann, but this just says Gurren Lagann. Now, this is probably one of the coolest special editions I have, because it's a magnetic box that opens like this. So, sadly, I only have part one, uh, which, as you'd guess, is two discs. Um, now, 
This did come with some extra stuff as well. I don't know if I have the leaflet actually. I do, as it happens. So this came with a patch as well, which I also put on a jacket, along with a hair clip of Yoko's kind of hair clip thing, which is rubber. I haven't opened this because I'm never going to put this on anything. I want to keep it kind of in good condition and I think it looks really cool. And the coolest thing, it came with this drill pendant. So you can actually attach it to string as Simon has in the series. And there's a little switch that hopefully, if I turn her on, hey, so it's hard to see, but it does glow green, especially in the dark. I imagine this looks pretty cool. So I've kept this in the box as well, because I'm never going to put on anything because I don't want it to break. But that is really cool as well. I do regret not getting part two and three. I want to say part two came with the soundtrack because friend of the channel, Wizzlad, did buy all three and he did lend me the CD. So um, maybe I'll try and get part two and three one day, but I want to say they're kind of pricey now. But I do have it all on Blu-ray though. So when I open that up, I may put the Blu-ray in this box because, you know, why not? Next up is the Halo Legends uh, Steelbook Edition. So... This is, I think, seven mini OVAs set in the Halo universe. And honestly, most of the reason I bought this is because it was on offer for very cheap. Um, these are all anime uh, adaptations of Halo, but sort of... It's a little bit like the uh, Disney Star Wars anime thing, where each studio kind of made a short OVA based on a universe. And I really like the Steelbook. I'm not a huge, huge Halo fan, but I really like Legends. It's just, oh, it, it's just, you know, a bunch of fun, really. You don't super need to know a lot about the Halo universe to enjoy it. But yeah, very, very fun. Probably out of print by now, I imagine, as well. Next up is High School of the Dead, an absolute classic. If you like zombies and lots of big boobs, then you are going to enjoy this series. Sadly, we only ever got one season of it, but this this is a true patrician's anime. This is honestly one of the most fun series I've ever seen. I do need to get it on Blu-ray eventually. It is... Uh, it's just so good. It's unapologetic about what it is, and I highly recommend giving this a watch. Next up is Jojo's Bizarre Adventure Season 1, which is both Phantom Blood and Battle Tendency, as um, it was kind of the first two parts combined. So this is the special edition that comes with a booklet as well, so that's the back. So part one, oh no, part one is Phantom Blood, no that is Battle Tendency, sorry. So this is Phantom Blood, this follows Jonathan. Uh, and the origins of Dio and stuff. This is like seven episodes, I want to say. I personally quite enjoy part one. I know a lot of people say it's kind of dull and boring. It is a bit slow, but I think it's really cool. And part two, Battle Tendency, starring, uh, following Joseph. And uh, I can't remember his name. Um, but he, you know, R.I.P. Uh, sorry, that is a spoiler, I suppose. But yeah, this is definitely where the series starts really amp ramping up and stuff. I do love Battle Tendency as well. And the main reason I bought this is because I think this is kind of a limited edition. I don't know if this is on sale anymore. But this does come with key animations. I mean, part of the appeal of Jojo is just how beautiful the series is. So when I saw this came with like an art booklet and everything, I, I knew I had to get it. It is such a stylish series that... Uh, you know, it was a, it was a no-brainer. I love the anime, so this is the only JoJo's I own on Blu-ray so far. I do need to get Stardust Crusaders and the rest, but um, I know they, they are a bit pricey. And whilst I really enjoyed season three, it was a little bit of a slog, and you know I wasn't prepared to pay like fifty pounds for part one and then another fifty for part two. So you know, if I see them for a bit cheaper, I will. But I really love part one and two, so. I knew I had to get this one. Warning! Warning! This is another bootleg. So this is another anime that I bought on eBay. It was really cheap. Uh, my friend and I had really loved K-On! Season 1. And at the time, there was actually no official K-On! release in the UK. Uh, but we both kind of wanted it on DVD. So we saw this. For, it was ridiculously cheap. It was like £8 or something. So me and my friend ordered it. Uh, friend of the channel, Wizzlad again. And... We knew it was bootleg, but I mean, it's not too 
bad. Um, one of the episodes doesn't have any subtitles. But since then I did buy a Blu-ray collection of the first two seasons and the movie. But I haven't got around to watching them yet so they're not actually in the collection. But I kind of like the bootleg. It's got a slight tackiness to it. But it's also only £19.90 or 19 RM. I think it's Thailand maybe. Let me know in the comments if you recognise what RM is. But... Uh, you know, this is clearly a bootleg, or unless it's a region-free one, there is actually an official release, but I think it's a bootleg. I do, however, have the official k -On movie. Uh, this came out after the second season and is amazing. I think, again, in terms of anime movies, this is probably one of my favourites. It's very cute, I love k -On, uh, and the fact this was shot in London, and in places I've been to in London, is extra cool. So yeah, this is a very good movie. If you've not seen it and you like K-On, absolutely. What, what are you doing? But yeah, this is official, but I do now technically own it twice because I have it on Blu-ray as well. But I haven't watched that version yet. And another fairly recent addition, that is Love and Lies. So this was part of a mystery bundle as well. And honestly, isn't usually my kind of thing. Um, I'm not super into romance animes, but this, I don't know, th this kind of... This really stuck with me. Um, I watched it thinking maybe I'd like give it a charity or sell it. But I ended up wanting to keep it. I, I thought it was quite sweet. The basic premise is state mandated girlfriends. That would be terrible. Uh, and basically he's in love with her. But he is assigned her. And there's a bit of a triangle. And you know it kind of plays out. Uh, and his friend is kind of like maybe into him as well. It's uh, it's it's quite a it's quite a sweet anime. It is slightly weird in parts, but honestly, I really enjoyed this. I didn't expect to, but I did end up liking it enough that I wanted to keep it. And the penultimate letter in this episode is L. Uh, actually, we already started L, but still, which is love, Chunibyo and other delusions. Chuni Chunibyo, I I think maybe I'm pronouncing that wrong. Um, so this you've probably seen. GIFs or, you know, clips from it, if you haven't seen the series itself. It is about this Chuni uh, girl who is in love with the main character. It is very charming. Um, both she is and all of the other girls as well who are in his sort of high school harem. He's in high school as well, so it's not, you know, don't worry, it's not weird like that. But um, honestly, this is very entertaining. It's the perfect... Uh, kind of combination between romance, comedy, and intentionally over-the-top tuny scenes where they do battle with each other and stuff. It is... It's a series that I've always wanted to watch, uh, so I bought the Blu-ray and was thoroughly impressed. Enough, in fact, to buy the second series as well, which is Love, Chunibyo, and Other Delusions, Heartthrob, which throws in a childhood friend that uh, sort of adds a bit of tension, but not really, but, you know, enough comedy and stuff. It also comes with a poster, which I really like, and some art cards as well. Second season, I didn't think was quite as strong as the first one, but honestly, I did enjoy them both, uh, enough that I kind of marathoned, actually. I jumped straight to season two, which isn't what I always do. I tend to, like, leave it a while and then watch a season two, but, um, yeah, I really like this series. It is very fun. Highly recommended if you like Kind of slice of life, romancy, but kind of like slightly actiony things. Next up is a certified anime legend, and that is the Melancholy of Haruhi Suzumiya, season one. Uh, chances are, again, if you were into anime around like early two thousands and stuff, you'll recognise her. This is a great series, very funny, very weird. Um, it's it has, I think, it still has a bit of a cult following. I like to think anyway. Um, it is that depressing thing that when I was young this was everywhere and now this is considered a really old anime or whatever. I really enjoy it. Enough, in fact, that I have season two of the series as well. Uh, Malkov Haruhi Suzumiya season two, which is, I think, just as good as season one. <clears throat> Especially that really fun uh, run of uh, episodes called Endless Eight, which are the same episodes eight times in a row with minor differences. The true anime fan test is if you've watched all eight. I have, oh yes. This also came with the Melancholy of Haruhi-chan Suzumiya, 
which is a sort of chibi spin-off. They're like four minute segments each. This is part one or like disc one. I'll be honest, it was fun, but not enough that I ever looked into if there's a disc or season two of it. It, it, it was charming enough, but you know, I really like the series. In fact, enough. I also have The Disappearance of Haruhi Suzumiya, which is the movie and, quite frankly, probably the best movie based on a series that I've ever seen. This is phenomenal. It's, it's beautiful, the story is really good. It's quite complex because, especially in season two of Haruhi, things do start ramping up, so this movie just, like, perfects it. Sadly, we never really got a season three. We did get a series based on, I can't remember her name, not Makoto, but I can't remember her name. But I haven't seen that, maybe I'll get round to watching it, but it's not really the same. Honestly, I think this movie was the kind of perfect ending to the series. It's it's just so good. Like, there's, if you like the series and you haven't seen this, highly recommend seeing it. Highly recommend watching all of it, to be honest. It is very, it's a very fun series. And the last entry in part two is going to be Metropolis, which is a movie based on Osamu Tezuka's manga of the same name. I've not read the manga, I've not really read any Osamu Tezuka stuff, I know he made Astro Boy, um, but I haven't watched it or anything. I read a book on him actually though, so I kind of know about his history. This is a really cool movie, I really enjoy this, it's very unique, quite stylish. And when I first picked it up, I actually thought this was an anime retelling of the famous sci-fi movie from the 20s called Metropolis. Turns out it wasn't, but yeah, honestly, I really, I've only seen this movie once. I need to re-watch it as well, but I remember really digging it. It's very, very interesting. And that about wraps up part two of the Imminent Collection anime collection video. Thank you guys very much for watching. As always, I'll leave a playlist to other videos and maybe part one in the top there. Stick around for part three, that will be the last uh, part, and that will be going up in about a week, so stay tuned for that. Until next time, goodbye.